The first week of the NFL season was wild, but what did we learn from it? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel today. I'm going to be honest, I just got done doing nothing all day, sitting my ass on the couch and watching football for more than 10 hours. That is exactly the way God intended it. And I have some takeaways from week one. You know, the majority of the games were just played. I understand we still have the Monday night game tonight because you guys will be seeing this on Monday. But most of the games this week just took place in this last 10-ish hour period. And I want to give you guys some of my takeaways. Now, before I do that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are new. And let me know in the comments what you think of my takeaways. All right, so getting right into it, takeaway number one is that this Dolphins offense is unstoppable when Tua Tungavailoa is on. Now, last year, you know, Tua dealt with some injury stuff. He also had a few clunkers, I like to call it, games where he just he just didn't have it, right? But I think we saw it some last year, and we definitely, definitely saw it today. When Tua is on, when he when he's clicking on all cylinders, holy shit, this offense is hard to stop. He just threw against a, on paper anyway, pretty damn good Chargers defense, 466 yards and three touchdowns. And most importantly, most impressively, I think, was at the end of the game when the Chargers were up, it was third and 10, and the Dolphins needed to play. He stepped up in the pocket, completely unleashed a ball to Tyreek Hill, perfect placement, perfectly in touch right there for him, and then capital, capitalized on the drive at the end with a perfect fade route to Tyreek Hill. Tua played, in my opinion, one of the best games in his career. In a complete shootout, and I knew it was going to be a shootout. I predicted that all week. In a complete shootout with the Chargers, he was on point. Four, let me say it again. 466 yards for Tua Tonga Vailoa. When he is on, with the combination of Mike McDaniel's play calling, the scheme that they run, and how fast those receivers are, holy shit, they are unstoppable. I do not know. I don't know how you scheme against them. I, do, I don't know how you game plan against the Dolphins because no defense you can play can, I guess, neutralize them, right? Because you don't have the speed to keep up with them. And Mike McDaniel is so creative a coach where he can just scheme the guys open wide open in the middle of the field. So they are a matchup nightmare for all defensive coordinators. But when Tua, Tua can, in the past, you know, he's had some clunkers that have prevented him a little bit. When Tua is on, pff, holy shit, this offense is good. My second point is that, damn, the Cowboys, as of right now, look like the favorites to come out of the NFC. I just watched, I literally just got upstairs watching them absolutely throttle. And I'm going to make up a word there. The throttle, the New York Giants, 40-0. to zero. That's about as bad as a blowout I've ever seen. I mean, truthfully. Like, there are some, like, real shitty teams that, they, you know, they get to, like, week 14, 15. They're all injured, and you're playing against, fuck, like, Mike Glennon or some shit. This was, like, this was a Giants team who is coming into the season healthy and a team that won a road playoff game last year. Like, they're not some scrub-ass team. Now, I think they're a little overrated, but they're not some scrub-ass team. The Cowboys took them off the field. I mean, the Cowboys, again, a road game. This, was, this game was not in Dallas. This was a road game. The Giants were completely outmatched. After the first about four or five plays of the game, when the, when the Giants drove down the field and John Michael Schmitz uh, fucked up that snap that sent the Giants back about 15 yards and then they kicked the field goal, from that point on, the Cowboys had complete control of the game. Their defense, and I'm going to be emphasizing their defense here, their defense, holy shit. That pass rush was, there was like a, a swarm of bees. Like he couldn't, Daniel Jones couldn't get away from it. They were forcing turnovers. They were opportunistic. They blocked a kick for a touchdown. Like everything you want to see from your defense, the Cowboys gave you. When you're, and I don't, and I don't like to put real life value to fantasy, but stay with me for a second. When your defense, when your defense scores 38 fantasy points, they had a pretty good night. And the offense, um, I wouldn't say they were amazing. They they did their job. Yeah, Dak did his job. Tony Pollard scored twice. Appreciate you. And um, the thing about the Cowboys, man, is if the turnovers on offense could be limited a little bit and you guys let that defense thrive, whew, I do not know one single offense that could put up with that defense, with those pass rushers, with those DBs, because now they got Stephon Gilmore, don't forget. So the Dallas Cowboys are a really, really good team. I will shout out the 49ers as well. They also looked really, really good. I fucking hate the 49ers, so I'm not going to talk about them as much. But their defense looked really good. They had they had Kenny Pickett in a blender all day. And at least Daniel Jones, 
it, at least Daniel Jones supporters could like blame the weather and say, oh, it was rainy. Sure. Kenny Pickett was playing in the bright, sunny day in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Like there were no weather excuses for him. The 49ers just had his ass in a blender all day. So Dallas and 49ers really impressed today. And I think as of right now, they are the favorites in the NFC. Number three, uh, we saw a lot of good teams today take some bad losses. Uh, we're going to talk about the Minnesota Vikings. Again, a team that won 13 games last year, losing to the Tom Brady-less Buccaneers. Baker Mayfield actually looked really good. We're going to mention it, but we're not going to talk about my Seahawks getting ass-wiped by the uh, Los Angeles Rams, but that's whatever. The Bengals, you know, lost by three touchdowns to the Browns. And the Giants, you know, lost to the Cowboys, like I just mentioned. Now, to be honest with you, you can kind of make an excuse for each one of these teams, right? The Giants and um, the Bengals, they played in really, really bad weather. Uh, the Seahawks were, you know, injured. Their tackles got both got hurt. Tyler Lockett got hurt. They were already missing Devon Witherspoon and uh, Jamal Adams going into the game. And then, you know, the Vikings have Kirk Cousins as quarterback, so obviously that helps. But, but you can kind of make a little bit of an excuse for almost every single one of these teams. But I think the important thing at the, end, at the end of the day is that, like, you know, it's football. Losses like this are going to happen. I don't care if you're the Chiefs. Also, the Chiefs are a really good team that lost this week, you know. I don't care if you're the Chiefs. I don't care who you are. You're going to have bad losses. Every single year you have a few bad losses. For these teams, I think that, you know, like I said, I think the majority of them can bounce back and be good this year and still be playoff teams. Every once in a while, you have a clunker, and week one is no exception. It's actually probably the biggest exception because you're rusty coming into the offseason. But I think these teams will bounce back. I'm not too worried about any of these ones. Number four, and this takeaway hurts my heart. I, I saw it coming, but it still hurts my heart. Um, takeaway number four is that the Packers still own the Bears. Jordan Love filling the shoes of Aaron Rodgers, passing on the ownership from Rodgers to Love. Jordan Love threw for three touchdown passes and 245 yards. I mean, just completely shredded the Bears defense. The Packers went 9 of 16 on third down. Anything above 50% on third down is really good. The Bears, meanwhile, only went 3 of 13. Justin Fields had moments where he just looked lost. I mean, he threw a pick six. He was missing throws. I mean, he is not fun. Keep in mind, this game was in Chicago. This was supposed to be the game where the Bears finally took back some momentum in this rivalry with Aaron Rodgers gone. And they didn't do it. DJ Moore was a non-factor. The Bears defense was terrible. They lost a turnover batter Turnover battle 2-0. to zero. This was just an overall ugly, ugly, ugly game for the Bears. And this, I hope, doesn't set a precedent for the rest of their season. And then, you know, ending this video off, I just want to say, it's week one. That's my takeaway. It's week one. And I don't want to overreact too much to anything that happened. Any big performers, any bad performers, any big wins, small wins, little wins, whatever. Bad losses, however you make it. I don't want to overreact because it is week one teams. And I think we've seen this throughout the league teams are playing their starters less and less in the preseason. I do think that does have a little bit of, of an effect early on in the season, right? Especially like the first week or two week two, I think is where we can get an honest evaluation on some of these guys because now they've gone up against live opponents. They are have film, they have game film to watch everything like that. Like you're not going against your own team in practice every week. So I do think that week two will have a clearer picture about how good some of these teams actually are and how they're going to perform. Um, but I think week one is a bit too early to start making evaluations for the whole season, right? And I'm not going to overreact. I'm not going to do anything like that. Um, but it is worth keeping in the back of your brain to see the rest of the season. Like if these teams continue, you could say, okay, well, you know, maybe this team is going to disappoint this year or whatever. It's keep it in the back of your brain. Don't try not to think about it too much. And if it, you know, if what you saw this week doesn't happen next week, you could probably drop it. That's what I'm going to say. So if your team lost really bad this week, you have the whole rest of the season. You've got 17 more weeks of the NFL season to go. You'll be fine. Nobody's season is over. Nobody's being crowned as Super Bowl champions. I'm looking at you, Dallas Cowboys fans. Nobody's being crowned as champions. It's week one. Enjoy it or get rid of it and then look on to week two. So that's all I have to say about week one so far. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I will talk to you guys in tomorrow's video. Peace out.